Hi everybody and welcome back to Jewelry with Jen and I am Jen. I want to teach you uh, how to make a full set of jewelry today and I had been doing a jewelry 101 series. I'll put a link in that description box below the video. In that jewelry 101 playlist I have a lot of information that I've covered on the basic 101 techniques and applications to all the different jewelry findings, uh, clasps and crimping tools, um, making loops, head pins, and so on and so forth. So for you beginners and for the purpose of today's video, I will put a link in that playlist in the video for you below. And so if you need a little deeper dive on how to utilize just your basic Jewelry 101 techniques to put a uh, set of jewelry together, you'll find that very useful. So today I am going to teach you how to make a full set of jewelry. We are going to make a necklace, a bracelet, and a pair of earrings. And by the time we're done, you will have your basic jewelry technique down and hopefully be able to start making your own jewelry. And whether you're a hobbyist or you're looking to start making jewelry for a business, hopefully this will be a really great tool for you. So um, let me break this down into little smaller sections. So let's start with just the basics that you will need for these projects. The tools that we will need are just three tools with beginning jewelry basics. Okay, so we're just going to be using a pair of regular uh, wire cutters, flush cutters, and then we will use a pair of crimping pliers, a standard pair of crimping pliers, and then we will use a standard pair of what we call chain nose pliers. We will also be utilizing, obviously, wire. So I pulled out a couple types of wire here. Um, and they, you know, wire comes um, in lots of different uh, sizes and colors and um, flexibilities and so on and so forth. And it can be very overwhelming. If you're a beginner, I would recommend the seven strand. Um, I have here, this is the Beetleon brand, and we have seven strand. 19 strand, and then of course 49 strand. They are in two different colors, silver and gold, and these are a 0.018 inch thickness. That's the thickness of the wire, okay? So it doesn't really matter what kind of wire you're using. I also have a soft flex in silver, and this is a 0.019 inch, and that's the thickness of the wire. Um, and as you go along in your jewelry journey, you'll understand better how to pick out your wire. I also um, uh, have all about wire in my Jewelry 101 Basics playlist, and it gives you a nice breakdown. So use any kind of wire you want, really. Any kind of tiger tail, any kind of wire will be fine. The other thing that we will utilize is we'll utilize a beadboard. And I truly believe this is an, an integral part of jewelry making. And the reason for that is because it serves multiple purposes. It not only has your measurements, these are in inches. So it has your measurements on here so that you can lay your beads down and, the, and you know, stop them wherever the number is for the desired length you want to make. But you can also utilize this for a bracelet, and it also helps in the design process. So you can really, you know, move your beads around. This particular bead board is the Bead Buddy, um, bead buddy uh, boards. They come, there's hundreds of them, by the way. Just find what works for you. But I really believe if you're a beginner, you will appreciate a bead board and really find it integral in your design process. The other great thing about a beadboard is there's lots of little compartments here where you can put the things that you're working with. And then down here we have a standard bracelet. So at the bottom, um, I could make a bracelet. And then also with this board, there are three divots here. And so I could make a three strand necklace as well. So the little divots in each um, little area here is where you lay your beads. As you can see, mine laid out here. So a bead board is an integral part. Another um, 
the third thing that you will need is a bead stopper. I also have a little binder clip out here. And let me pull this up and show you what a bead stopper is, if you've never seen one. It's basically this little gadget that, <laughs> that has like springs in it, and you just open it. And when you open it, um, it ha the jaws open, and then you can put your wire directly inside there, and then what that does is it now prevents the beads you're stringing to it prevents them from slipping off your wire so you do not have to restring them. Now I also pulled out, let me put this back on this side. I also pulled out a little binder clip. And if you've got a chip clip or a bag clip laying around your kitchen or a binder clip in your office, these can serve the same purpose. Um, but in beginning beating, um, you know, you can just put that there. That'll help your beads from falling off. So either way, I would just recommend having a bead stopper or something to stop your beads. Um, and I still use them, even not as a beginner. I still use them. So bead stoppers are an integral part. And then, of course, we are using our beads. Today's beads that we're using are a 10 millimeter uh, frosted glass round bead in purple and blue with a gold dust frost on them. And I'll pull them way up as you can see. So these are the beads we're gonna utilize for all three projects. They are again a 10 millimeter round and you can use any beads you want. And then we need our clasp. So I have pulled out two options. So we have our lobster clasp, which is this guy. And then if we use a lobster clasp, we would need a jump ring. So I have a couple of jump rings out here. And then this is a toggle clasp. And so if we choose to use the toggle, then we can use the toggle clasp. And then the last item we will need is we need crimp tubes or crimp beads and crimp covers. Okay, and so I've got some crimp beads and then the or crimp tubes and the crimp tubes what they're designed to do is to stop your jewelry from falling off so it connects and secures your jewelry in place your crimps and then the crimp covers um are a nice little touch to cover up your crimps and give it a nice professional finish and also crimps sometimes um they can be scratchy on the body so that helps when you cover them up and that is it so that is what we're going to we're going to be utilizing all of this for both the bracelet and the earrings, but the additional things that we'll need for the earrings, we'll talk about that when we get to that project. So let's jump into it, friends. So let's start with project number one, which is our necklace. So what you would do is get your beadboard out and then go ahead and line up your beads to whatever desired size that you want to make. And then you're just going to cut a piece of wire and you're always going to give extra room. So let me explain that. So what I've done is decided to make an 18 inch necklace. And so right here is the nine. And you know, nine and nine is 18. So I've decided to make an 18 inch necklace and hopefully you can tell my beads stop right just directly below the nine because when we add our clasp, that's going to add about a half inch or so, quarter to a half inch. So I just stopped my beads right below the nine, allowing a little bit of room for the clasp because I want an 18 inch. But you can make any size you want, okay? And so in this case, because I'm making an 18 inch necklace, I cut way too much wire, but I cut about a 24 inch piece of wire. So my recommendation would be, to go ahead and give yourself at least two to three inches um, of extra wire past the length of your desired size. So as you can see here, let me pull it up. You can see, let me take the bead stopper off and you can see where my beads stop and my wire continues. So I've left myself plenty of room because if we make a mistake or just enough room to crimp or what I'm making, uh, you know, our, our finishing, we really want to make sure we have enough room. We never want to short ourselves. 
So all I've done is just gone ahead and first step is you cut yourself a piece of wire a little bit longer than your desired size. And then I've decided on my design and strung my beads on. And so with that, we will now finish up our necklace. So we have one, we put the bead stopper on one side. And what we will do now is let me get out a crimp cover and a crimp bead here. And then, by the way, I hope you can tell that I've got the crimp beads and the clasp and the wire. Everything is um, different. This is gold. This is silver because I want you to see the contrast so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so basically what we are going to do is we put the bead stopper on one side here. We will finish up our necklace once we've strung it out and we're happy with the way it looks. We will feed on a crimp bead or a crimp tube. I'm using crimp tubes today. And we'll just feed that right on the wire. And we let that just drop right on down. Okay, and now what we'll do is we need to grab a our clasp. So on the necklace, let's use the toggle. And so what you're going to do is put your wire through the toggle, the bar part of the toggle, and then you're going to pull your wire back around and make a loop. And you want to make sure your clasp stays on this side of the loop. Okay, and then we're going to take this wire and feed it back through our crimp. And then we'll go through, let's say, two beads. And that's optional. You can go through one, two, or three beads. And it just gives us a little extra security when we're finishing off our jewelry. And now what we have is, as you can see, we have our crimp tube here. We have a loop and we have the clasp on the side of the loop. Now what we'll do is we will take this tail that we pushed through and we are going to now pull that down very slowly. And as we pull that down, do you see what happens? We're getting closer and sometimes we have to keep wiggling our crimp and we just keep pulling until we are um, really close to, I'd say, you know, I don't know what that is, like a fingernail, maybe two fingernails. Do you see the distance there uh, between my clasp and my crimp? Because we need to make sure that there's movement in the clasp and we also need mo uh, an area to finish crimping. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll grab our crimping tool and our crimping tool, as you can see, there is a top and a bottom divot. The bottom divot looks like a half moon. And that's the first place we crimp. And then the top is just a little circle, and that's the second place we crimp. So we start by putting our crimp tool at the very bottom divot within the crimp tool. And then what we're doing is we are going to just go ahead and squeeze. And now what that did was just simply put the wires on either side of the crimp to hold that down. Now we turn it 90 degrees and we're going to use that top divot on the crimp tool. And then we place that right inside the crimp and then we just make one squeeze. And what that now did was it folded our crimp in half. Okay, so that's what we have. And now we can take our crimp cover and, oops, let me put this down and so I can get my pliers. And the easiest way that I find is to just snap your crimps on your crimp covers on. And so what you do is, they're very <laughs> slippery in my hands today. You just are going to take the crimp cover and snap it over. You'll feel it snap into place right there over your crimp. And then you're just going to hold it there and then come in with your crimping tool. And then you just 
grab either side and gently squeeze it together. And then what happens is it'll end up looking like a little round bead. And you have to do this several times and go back and forth. And then this is what we have. So now the crimp cover has covered up our crimp bead. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and trim off the remainder of that tail using our flush cutter. So what you do is just go right in there, make sure you're only cutting off your tail, not your longer wire. And you just go ahead and snip that off and we're good to go. So now we have one finished side, okay? Now what we'll do is we will grab the other side. We can remove our bead stopper. And at this point, we wanna go ahead and shake our beads down a little bit all the way to where we know we don't have any gaps up here. We want this to be nice and flush, just like that, okay? So what I like to do and what I like to tell people is when you're finishing off your second side, it's a little trickier. Um, you wanna make sure you have movement and fluidity in your beads. So you do not want to like lay your necklace flat. You want to make sure that it is in some sort of a circular motion or bent in some way. And this helps to allow that the beads will move in their natural way on the body as they're intended to. And again, you just have movement and fluidity in your beads. If you crimp and finish it off too tight, you will have no movement and your beads can crack, okay? So we will just keep this laid just like this in our bead board. And we're going to repeat the same process we just did on that side. So we need a crimp cover, a uh, crimp tube, and the other part of our clasp. So we, we have now jiggled our beads down and we're nice and flush up here. We will feed the wire through the crimp tube. Let that go ahead and drop down on our wire. And then we go ahead and grab the other part of our clasp, feed the wire through the loop on the clasp. And then again, we pull the wire back around making a little circle. So we're making like a loop and making sure that our clasp stays over on this side. And oops, I lost my crimp bead in my bead. There it is. And now we take the wire and we feed the wire back through the crimp, just like that. And now we'll go ahead and feed it through one of the beads and then you grab that tail. I'm still holding onto my crimp here. And as you can see, I'm pulling and as I'm pulling, everything is starting to tighten up. And that's just exactly what we want. Okay, and just keep pulling it. I'm keep I'm losing my crimp bead in my bead here. Okay, so again, just keep pulling that tail until you're about, you know, a little bit, you've just got a little bit of room. Okay, kind of like that. Because again, we want to make sure that the clasp can freely move around, right? And we also need a little bit of room to crimp our crimp bead there. So you wanna kinda pull it and you know, as you continue in your jewelry making journey, you'll get used to that. You know, it's about, it's about that close. If I can keep my crimp bead away from that disappearing in my bead. So we're about there. So it's just a, a fingernail space or two, but again, making sure we have movement. We're gonna go, again, the first divot in our crimp tool, and we are going to put that in our crimp bead, and then we're gonna just give it a squeeze. And then that crimped on both sides of the wire, we turn it 90 degrees around the other way, that crimp. We go on the top uh, portion of our crimping tool, and then we'll just go ahead and give that a squeeze and that folds it in half. Now we'll grab 
our crimp cover and we will just put that right over our crimp bead okay and we can go in with our crimpers and we can just simply close that up until it looks like a little round bead and again you will have to do this several times and just be patient and gentle with it and you'll get it and then we have our tail that we need to cut off here so we go in with our flush cutters and we grab that tail and go right in between that bead and try to get as close as we can and making sure we're just grabbing the tail and we'll go ahead and snip that tail off and now you have a completed necklace and there you go so that is project number one and we've made an 18 inch necklace now let me go ahead and let's clear this stuff over um out of the way we'll keep our bead stopper and all of this and we're going to change boards and we are now going to grab the other board that i have and it is a bracelet board. Put the necklace up there. And so this is by the Beadsmith, and these come in lots of brands as well. And what's really cool about the bracelet board, this is a bracelet and anklet design board, is each little cavity is a different size, but there's also, it comes in centimeters, and then it's inches, so you can design flat up here, or you can lay your beads around in the divot and when you um, complete your circle like this it says a seven and a half inch then you're done or if you want to make um, a seven inch for example here's the seven inch so either way it really does not matter so same exact process that we just did in the necklace we are going to do over here on the bracelet and now what I'm going to do is I've removed my bead stopper and I've strung my beads okay and I will lay them down here now what I like to do for bracelets is if you're using a clasp you do want to be mindful and I would go with you know seven and a quarter to seven and a half. Um, it just depends if you have a smaller wrist or a bigger wrist, what size bracelet that you're going to make. But for um, for me, so um, I know that mine is about seven and a quarter or so for uh, the my wrist size. And so what I'm going to do is I've laid this down and I've um, down here on the bottom as you can see, and there's a zero here. And then this is uh, three and a half. And then this is three and a half. And that right there is seven inches, right? So I've got seven inches of beads. And I know that by adding my clasp, I'm gonna give myself, you know, another, we can always measure that too, by the way, guys. Here's a little, another tip that this right here is about an inch, this lobster clasp. So now we'll do it with the lobster clasp and a jump ring. And so then you can see utilizing the two types of clasps. So I am fine with seven, in, seven inches. So I've cut my wire, I've strung my beads, and I've decided to stop my beads at exactly seven inches because by the time I'm done adding my clasp, that will fit my wrist perfectly. Okay, so again, I will put a bead stopper on one side and let's grab our crimps. So we'll need our crimp and our, we have a lobster clasp and a jump ring and let's grab this side. So same exact process we just did on the necklace. We will pick, and sometimes I just put my crimp tube down, by the way, on my mat or my board and kind of go fishing with my wire. I find that to be very helpful. And so there it is. There's our crimp. And then we can just go ahead and let that drop on down. 
And then we will go ahead and put our wire through the loop here on our lobster clasp. And again, we will make our little loop. So we pull our wire around, making sure our clasp is over here. And we wanna put that right through that crimp. And then we wanna go through a bead or two. That's a complete preference. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll pull that up until pulling that tail. And then everything is starting to come together until we're just a little bit, I don't know what that is. It's like, maybe it's a about a centimeter or so. And again, we just want to have Look, making sure that our clasp can move, okay? And also that we have room to crimp our, our bead. And so we go in the bottom divot of our crimper. We put that crimp tube right in our crimping plier on the bottom. And then we just give it a squeeze. And then that went ahead and crimped our bead and as you can see it kind of laid down with the wire on each side and that's what you want you never want to cross your wires by the way I've been forgetting to mention that you never want to cross your wires you want them to be just like that and then we just rotate the way we just crimped it 90 degrees the opposite way we're gonna go on the top portion of our crimp tool and we will just set that in there and give that a squeeze and that just basically folds our crimp in half then we can grab a crimp cover and we can put that right over you can also try to put your crimp in your tool like this and slide it over your crimp bead. You can try it this way too. And you know, either way works. I find it better to just snap them on myself and then go in with my tool. So let's see here. You're just going to put the crimp cover. And again, I do have a tutorial on crimping and crimp covers in my Jewelry 101 playlist. So you can see really good up close what I'm doing. And so we've got that crimp cover over the crimp tube. We just go in and we gently squeeze. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They are so slippery. Okay, let's see if I can get you on there. My beads also have a high gloss. <laughs> Everything is really slippery, so let's see. All right, let's just go ahead and get that closed on there. All righty. Very good. Okay. So now we have our crimp cover over our crimp bead. Now we can go ahead and get rid of that tail. And then we grab our other side. We can lay that side down, make sure we're always nice and flush right up here. We don't want any gaps there, but we also have enough movement for our clasp. We can remove our bead stopper. And uh, we need a crimp. And my other crimp cover flung away. <laughs> but we've done it enough times now that I think you can get it. So let's just go ahead and again finish it off. So same process, guys. Feed on your crimp tube first. Okay. And now we have a jump ring. And so what we're going to want to do is put the jump ring on. And same thing we're doing with the other clasps. Make our little loop. Making sure our... Jump ring is on the side of our crimp, and then we are going to 
feed our wire through the crimp tube and that first bead. And then we grab our tail. And then I'm gonna hold on to my jump ring. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and pull until, and again, as you can see, my, my bracelet is kind of in a rounded, land the divot there, it's rounded, so I'm making sure that I have plenty of movement in my beads. And let's, sometimes again, you have to push the crimp down the wire to get it, there we go. Okay, and so now I've got that nice and close, and we'll go ahead and crimp that off. And so we will start at the bottom of the plier and go ahead and squeeze that and then turn it halfway, squeeze it from the top and perfect. Now we go ahead, let's get rid of the wire with our flush cutter. And now what you wanna do, and this is where your chain nose come in, is you want to take your jump ring if it's half open like mine is, and unless you buy a closed jump ring, you want to go ahead and wiggle it back and forth until it's fully closed, just like that. And now let me pull that up for you and show you what that looks like. So now we have the jump ring, we have the lobster claw, and we have a finished bracelet, and we can take and put this right in the jump ring, and there we go. So now we have made our bracelet. Now we are done with crimping, and we're done with clasps, and all of this. So let's get this stuff cleaned up, guys, and go into our final project. <laughs> now we're into project number three, and we'll go right on the mat here. And let's make a pair of earrings to go with our necklace. And we have our bracelet. And the only thing that we are going to need for our uh, earrings is our head pens and our ear wires, and then of course our beads. So, to make a pair of earrings, you will need any kind of ear wires, findings, there's thousands of them out there. And these are some standard kidney ear wires, as you can see, they're in silver. But there's, again, lots and lots of ear finding ear, earring findings out there. And then we need some head pins, and I pulled out three types of head pins to show you. So whatever kind of head pins you want to buy, it's totally um, just a design element. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to show you three examples of the most common head pins. And let's start with this. This is what we call an eye pin. You see it has a little circle at the bottom. So that's one type of head pin. And then we have what we call a ball end head pin. And it has a little tiny ball at the end there. And then we have what we call a flat head head pin. And as you can see, right at the bottom there, there's a flat head, okay? So you can use any head pins you want. I'm going to use the flat head today, okay? But I just wanted to pull those out to show you because, you know, whatever you've got, it will work, okay? And then we have our beads. So the tool that we will need for um, uh, making earrings is we need a different tool which is called a pair of round nose pliers. We also need those chain nose pliers, okay? And then of course our ear wires, our head pins, and our beads. We also need a different pair of cutters. And so we're gonna change out our tools now. And these are a heavier duty wire cutter. You do not wanna use your 
uh, wire cutters that you use for your beading wire over on the thicker head pins or any kind of artistic wire because it will start to make divots in the blade and dull them quicker. So you wanna separate those. So the three tools that we will utilize for making a pair of earrings are some heavier duty wire cutters, chain nose pliers, and round nose pliers. And I do have a tutorial up on round nose pliers in both my Jewelry 101 playlist and my playlist that is Jewelry Tools. So I'll put a link in the description um, for that. But I'm going to teach you right now how to make a perfect loop anyway. So you can feel free to go in that series and um, in that playlist series and see how to make a perfect loop. But I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So what you would do is you're just going to take your beads and the only thing you need to really concern yourself with is the hole, the size of the hole on your bead that it is not going to fall through whatever head pin you're using. So like for example, let me grab this ball end and put this over here and see that that fits perfectly. It's not falling through the other side. So this bead will work on that head pin. And then I have the flat head pins that we're using here. I put the bead on and also, as you can see, it is stopping right there at the bottom and it's not going through, okay? So what I like to do is I like to make both earrings at the same time so we know that we're cutting them the same length. So let's go ahead and feed on Oh, let's see, let's do three beads, okay? So we just take and fed three beads on our head pen. I'll grab the other pen and do three beads on this one. So now we have both of our head pins with three beads on them, okay? Now what we're going to want to do is make a loop. And in order to make a loop, what you're going to do is you are going to kind of put the head pin on your thumb like this, and you're gonna to wanna to hold the head pin uh, to prevent it from slipping up and down the beads. So kind of grab a hold um, any way you can to stop your head pin. And what we'll do is we will take our chain nose pliers and we will go just slightly, a fingernail length above our bead, and we will make a right angle. Okay, just like that. And now what we will do is we will grab our cutters and we will use our finger as a guide. And that's what I do is I see wherever like the top, the wire goes beyond my finger, which is, you know, maybe, you know, a millimeter or two. Maybe it's about, I don't know, a centimeter. And then I just kind of, we're going to cut right there. Okay. And we're going to face down on the mat and cut because these um, like to um, fling and you can't hurt yourself. <laughs> you don't want to hit yourself in the eye. And so there we go, that's what we have. Now we will grab our chain nose pliers, excuse me, our round nose, and we are gonna go in and we are going to make it a loop. And in order to make a loop, we're going to grab that wire flush right there. Let me get it here. Okay, and now as you can see, I have no wire sticking up above my plier here you wanna make sure that your wire is flush here. And then holding that, you're going to twist your wrist forward and then stop and then you have to open and readjust, that's fine. And then close and continue doing this in a forward motion, just like that, until we've made a loop. And that's what we have. Okay? And we'll do that one more time. 
And so we will hold our head pin in our hand. We will put our chain nose directly above the bead, leaving about, you know, a fingernail space. And then we are going to just put a right bend in it, just like that. Bend it forward, just like that. And then we will come in with our wire cutters and we will judge using our finger as our width. And then we're gonna cut our wire right there. And I'm gonna cut it down, facing down, as to not hurt myself. And there we go. Now we will grab our round nose pliers. We will put them on the wire, flush at the top of the wire so there's nothing sticking above the plier. And we're gonna hold this and pull it, roll our wrist forward. So we're gonna roll our wrist, wrist forward and if we have to keep stopping and open and readjust, then that's fine. It's completely normal. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we've made a loop. And there we go, we made a loop. Okay, so now we have our loops. Now, you do wanna make sure that your loops are totally closed, and sometimes they can, you know, bend, and that's what's great about head pins and all this artistic wire is, you know, you can certainly straighten them out, and you can go back in. You see there's a little bit of a gap. I can go back in with my round nose pliers, and I can pull that all the way until it touches, just like that, the inside of the other side of the wire. And then I can always just put my chain nose flat on the ear wire there and straighten it out if I need to. I can also grab it like this and gently squeeze it to where there's no gap. So let's check this one and see. We have a little bit of an opening there. And so same thing, I'll just go in with my round nose and just pull it a little bit more forward to where it met the other inside of that piece of the wire. And there we go. Now, all we have to do is simply connect them to our ear wires. So what you do is you go in with your chain nose, grab your ear wire, and these loops have one side that opens, okay? And you don't want to usually open these more than what you have to. So I just usually crank it forward just like that. Oops. I also put lotion. <laughs> lotion on my hands a little bit ago. And so now the loop is open on our kidney ear wire. And then all we do is take our earring and feed it on that loop. And then the open part of your loop you made on your earring, on your head pen, I like to face that towards the back because this would be the front and this would be the back of the earring, right? So I like to always face my loops back. So I don't know, it just looks a little nicer. And then go in with your chain nose, grab the loop on the ear wire, and you're just gonna simply press it towards your finger until it's flush, just like that, and you've closed up now your little uh, loop on your ear wire. And there we go. And we'll repeat the same process on this earring. And so we go with our chain nose, we find the side that opens here, and we just slightly bend that forward into where that is now open. And then we go ahead and put our head pen, we feed it right like that on our ear wire, and then we are going to go back in with our chain nose, grab that same loop, and press it in towards our finger until it's straight, which it is, and there we go. That is what we have. So we have now made 
a full set of jewelry. I hope everybody enjoyed that. And that was very, very helpful for you beginners on how to start your jewelry making journey. And that is just your very basic, simple technique. And I will continue to post videos on getting into more advanced techniques and even, um, you know, starting out, but uh, maybe you're brand new to memory wire and we'll do some uh, stretch bracelets. I actually have some of those videos up. Um, if you wanna take a look around on my playlist, um, you might find that useful as well. So I hope everybody enjoyed and I hope this helps you get started in 2024 with your jewelry making journey. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And until next time, be blessed.